Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the second part of the 22nd week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand from an $11 tournament that one of my opponents played, and obviously I took place in it. I'm down here, J Card Shark. And in this hand, in second position, he picks up Ace-2 suited with about nine effective big blinds, maybe eight effective big blinds, and he elects to go all in. And right here, I think this is actually a fold. And I know that in this spot with a suited ace, a lot of people just blindly go with it. But I do think that, particularly in low state games, you're going to ha have a better chance by taking the blinds, getting down to you know 6,000 chips, and then shoving from late position with a, a, a wide range. You know What a lot of people don't realize is that whenever you're shoving from early position, the odds that someone else behind you has a better hand and like a callable hand is fairly high. I mean, for example, let's just look at what a standard calling range would be. Like, what, what hands are people never folding, right? So if people are, like, never folding these hands, that's about, let's call it 8% of hands. No one's folding any of these hands to this shove. So notice there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 people behind that all have an 8% chance to pick up one of those hands. And obviously that's pretty high. So you're going to get called a decent amount of the time here, and when that's the case, let's see how much equity Ace-2 suited has. You'll see it's pretty much in the dumps. So because of that, I do think that right here folding with Ace-X, even suited, is going to be a very good play that most people don't make. Um, this was actually one of the biggest leaks that I had when I first started playing Sit and Goes back in, you know, 2003, <laughs> because... Uh, I, I guess I, I didn't really realize that shoving here was would be a bad play. I mean, you have an ace, and you're not very deep stacked, so why not shove? But the reality is, someone behind you is going to pick up something probably like over half the time, and when they do, you're just going to be in really bad shape. So I think folding here is a good play. So what hands would I be shoving with? If I was in this situation, I would be shoving something like this. I actually think the suited connectors are pretty good to shove here. So I think I'd be shoving a range something like this, uh, maybe maybe pocket fours. Um, the reason I'm shoving hands like suited connectors here are because whenever your opponents do call, they're going to tend to do pretty well. Um, you know, if they call with ace-jack and you have 7-8 suited, it's not really the end of the world. So I'd be shoving with a range like this. Uh, King-jack starts to run into the same problems as, as uh, ace-three, where a lot of time when you get called, you're dominated by, like, queen, king-queen or... Um, King Jack, King Queen or King Jack or Ace King, yeah, all those. <laughs> um, so you could you could cut out stuff like King Jack offsuit, Queen Jack offsuit. You could cut those out, but the suited ones are still going to be good enough to shove. You could even shove these if you felt like it. But I think something around like 14% is a pretty good shove range in this situation. Also, if you know anything about your opponents, that can also help you know if you can shove a little bit tighter or wider. For example, if you know the big blind will call you fairly wide, like with, say, any ace, ace-2 goes way down in value because you're going to be dominated when you get called a lot of the time. So be careful about things like that. I discuss these uh, shove situations a decent amount in my book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. You can check that out. Volume 2 of the book came out recently. If you haven't had a chance to look at that, take a look at that as well. You can get it on Amazon.com. Um, and also, you know, like I said in the previous episode, on floatthetern.com, there are tons of videos about how to play these shallow stack situations that come up all the time in poker. And if, if you're messing this situation up every time, you're going to find yourself spewing a ton of money. Um, like I said before, the way I figured out that this was a leak, actually, is I paid a guy $5,000 to coach me in sit and goes uh, for 10 hours. So I paid him $500 an hour. This is back in 2003. And... You know, that like instantly made my return on investment increase by like two and a half percent or something like that, just overnight, because I stopped making this mistake. And if you're making these errors that come up over and over again, because, you know, you do get ASEX suited from early position with 10 big blinds a decent amount of the time. And if you're messing that up every time, you're, you're just going to be spewing equity all over the place. And it gave me an extra two and a half percent return on investment. So if I'm playing, um, let's say, the $200 games like I was playing, I'll just show you how much money this is worth. So $200 games, I was making 
well, this increased my return on investment by 2.5%, so 0 0.025. means I made an extra $5 per game, right? So if I play 3,000 games per month, that is $15,000. That sounds like a lot. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it is. So it's a pretty huge amount. And, of course, he was probably teaching me other things at the time that also increased my ROI. But let's say that even if it increased my return on investment by 1%, right, which doesn't sound like much, $2 per game, if I played 3,000 games per month, which I was easily doing, that's an, that's an extra $6,000 per month. And that's, that's playing $200 games. Obviously, it's going to be less if you're playing smaller games. But this one leak was costing me a ton of money, and I, I was probably playing with this leak for like a year. So if we take this amount times 12, making this mistake cost me $72,000 over the course of a year. And, you know, that's, that's absurd. So hopefully that this will show you that whenever you're playing, particularly online poker or any poker where you're playing a lot of volume, if you're making the same error over and over and over again, it will cost you a ton of money. So that's going to be that for this week. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know.